Hi, welcome to Mark D. Maker. Today we're going to be looking at an automaton. This is the coolest thing. Automaton is basically when you take materials, put it together, and it emulates a living being. Uh, it moves with a little help. So let me show you this. There's a, a little place here where you can turn it and this cat tries to catch this mouse. You can see there's wooden gears in here that make the mouse go around and make the cat's tail and arm move. So this is a puzzle. I got it on eBay for about $17. But we're gonna make our own out of scratch wood, just from stuff laying around. It's gonna be a lot of fun. It's gonna be educational. Come on, I'll show you how to do one. Now these are called one, two, three blocks. And I'll show you why. Because they're one inch thick, two inches this way, and three inches this way. And they are heavy, very heavy. This set cost me about 16 bucks on Amazon really worth the price one two three blocks and and you can also get them with many many holes in them so you could line up or even bolt them together to uh to make even thicker but i usually use them individually um, i use them as an as an amble to to pound on when I'm doing like clockwork, so I'm not, you know, going crazy with a gigantic hammer, smaller hammer, uh, you can rivet things on this. Um, and, and like you saw, I have this piece of wood sitting up. It's perfect because these are precision ground. You know, this is a, a 90 degree angle. This is a perfect angle right here. Uh, you can't get any straighter than that. Sometimes they call these machinist blocks um, because they will put this on like a, a machine table and work off of this either like in a mill or a drill press or, or whatever. It's flat. Um, like I say, it's a piece of precision tool. If you've never had them, buy them. And then you can message me and say thank you. Because once you start using them, you'll find out just how valuable they are. Let's see how this came out. A little blue on the on the block there. Looks like it came out pretty good. Through the slightest bit of overhang. And we'll clean that up on the belt sander. And it's 
gonna sit like that. And my little guy is gonna be up there like that. So I used a little uh, of this plastic wood on the corners and it, it did really nice. I sanded most of it off. It just filled in a couple little gaps that I had that were just a little distracting to the eye. Here's a tip that's gonna be very helpful to you. When, when you buy this stuff, this is plastic wood, it is an acetone base and it absorbs very quickly. It'll dry out on you if you don't store it right. If you notice, the can is printed upside down. This is the top. So you, you'd open it, use it, turn it back over like this. Then you can put the label on the top to try to force you to store it on its top upside down because it helps seal it and, and hold in the wood putty. It'll last a lot longer if you keep it like that. Uh, another little trick you could do is just a, a single layer of grocery bag. If you cut it, lay it on there and then put the top on, put it on there nice and secure, uh, lasts a long time. I also want to show you a neat little tool. I showed this before in an earlier video. This is a cutter. <clears throat> and for little pieces, like the hammer in this guy's hand, or like the um, piece of metal on the anvil that is hammering, or the handle that I made, this little tool, especially if you don't have like a bandsaw or something, cuts wood so easily. Here's a piece of square stock. Just goes right through it. Even has degrees and angles on it. So if you want to get an angle, there's an angle. Um, and there's Home Depot has their version. I'm sure um, Lowe's has one. Craftsman has a version of it. Um, but these are great little cutters. Uh, they're, they're, uh, I go to them a lot for different things. Took my compass, made some circles, glued pieces together, clamped them, took them to the bandsaw and cut them out. And, and the reason why I, I did this, I'm using the same wood as here, um, but gluing it together because I want a wider surface or a wider band, wider band here for the wood to ride on. Now what I'm going to use is bamboo skewers with this little wooden bead on it and it's going to ride along this. And it's going to push up and down and it's going to cause the little guy to move. So. <clears throat> Just regular bamboo skewers and these are some wooden beads that I got from uh, I believe these were from Joanne fabric they're just like wooden necklace beads they were super cheap and what that will do is is make it so it won't like snag or whatever took a little paste wax put around the edge here to make that nice and smooth So while this is glued together, this is going to be a stump, the anvil, and the piece of metal that he's hammering on. I'll paint it later, but I will arrange it and have to move that stump around to, you know, this guy's going to go in the center, so I'll, I'll arrange this after I get him in with the mechanical lift and everything, and then I'll arrange this to where I need it last. We're making some progress. Here on the end, you can see I glued on one of the beads I had to use my knife to kind of open the hole in it a little bit and trim the uh, the bamboo skewer a little bit. 
but it'll sit right up against that edge now. And this is going to be a free floating spacer. And then the handle will be glued on. I'll have to make sure it gets, you know, good 90 degrees in there. And, uh, and then we'll start working on figuring out these guys. This is going to come over like so. And this hand's going to come up onto here. All right, this is where I'm at right now. As you can see, um, the little bead that I was planning on using to ride on the wheel here wasn't enough surface. And, and I actually made a mistake over here by, by uh, not putting this rod directly over that rod. So if it's right in the middle, it'll ride better. So I had to extend both of these. That's just a popsicle stick. But you can see that they, they ride pretty good. I had to cut these wheels smaller because the wheels were coming up and, and uh, not going all the way around with this added wood and the bead. So I've worked on this for at least four hours to get it to this point. My advice is uh, use a pattern <laughs> or make it out of cardboard first. So I mixed up a little epoxy and put them right on these beads. We're going to make feet at the bottom of the box. Just to give it a little decorative flair. Glued up a couple boards, clamped them together. This is going to be another character in the machine. All right, so the character that's going to go right here is going to be a cat. I found this on the internet. And that's pretty close. That's going to go here. And when he hits this, this cat's going to jump up and down. Time to paint. Here's where we're at right now. Seems to have good motion. Works pretty good. What I'm thinking about doing now is carving a little dog to sit down in here with some of these, surrounded by some of these tools just because there's a, a lack of interest right here in the middle. I was actually going to put another uh, action item in here on along this shaft, but I decided not to. It's, it's busy enough up here. Just needed a little something down here, so carve that dog and uh, get him in there. I just took a, a picture off the internet, um, reduced it down to it's about the right size. Uh, it's a uh, quarter of an inch uh, basswood maybe half inch looks like three quarter um, and put a line down the middle and, and uh, that line is going to be the high part of like the back the top of the head uh, so I'm going to use that as the guide all the way around it
Well, that's it. All finished with them. Please like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.